Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the third episode where we are pushing all the healers to KSM. In the episode so far, we managed to get the Shaman to 2500 and KSH, and we also got our Evoker to KSM over to K rating. Today we continue and we're playing Disc Priest. We spent some time in queue, we didn't get invites, so we decided to run our own Arakara plus 5 key. And we got this tank who said, okay, let's lose the first pool. Then he mounts up, starts running, and somehow people just start to get aggro. Relevant or not, he was from Quotalas, the Ragnaros servers. So uh, I die here. I think somebody else died, but the tank still decided to pull everything all the way to the spider. I don't know if they lost it, but uh, obviously he should have just stopped when he saw that his healer is dead and everybody else is dying. By the time I managed to run back, they're still alive, but I just uh, got there in time to see them die. So that's a great start of the key. The tank then started to pull smaller. We make it through the trash uh, before the first boss. And after we kill the last spider, the hunter just decided to jump off the cliff and suicide himself. Well, I'm, I'm not sure what's up with that. Maybe he was from Quautalas as well, like... Who knows, uh, whatever. I think at least we had the last remaining for the first boss. And uh, yeah, the first boss. Nobody is focusing the ads. The tank is not kiting the boss. They grip one of the ads on top of the boss. Absolute comedy. They have no idea what we're doing. Obviously, they managed to buff the boss, which is a good recipe to wipe, which we did. And then things just started to go south from there. We come back, we killed the boss, but then we had uh, ninja pools on the trash, that's on the trash, that's on the second boss, that's on the trash after the second boss. And somehow we made it to the last boss with 20 deaths, but that didn't go very well either, because uh, obviously it's not a very puck friendly boss. We had a couple of deaths that we managed to battle res. But then people just kept dying to waves, to the sucking, to everything. Uh, I realized how badly this boss is designed if you're a priest, because you have no interrupt, no poison dispel, no easy way to get out of the route. Like, uh, who designed this blizzard? Like, why? How? W whatever. Completely unfair, not to mention that's probably the most bug unfriendly boss ever. Anyhow, the DK disconnects here, uh, he eventually came back, but the warrior decided he had enough. And the warrior was definitely one of the weakest link, links in uh, the ski. Somehow uh, he leaves, uh, he breaks our key, and uh, that's the start of the Disc Priest journey. We then queue to another key, plus 6 Necrotic Wake with a monk tank who basically insta invite us. And he started pulling very, very slowly. Unfortunately, I did not record that key for whatever reason, but it went relatively smooth. We had a few dumb dads overall, but uh, we managed to go all the way in time at which was the first time key plus six for the Disc Priest. We then come back to Arakara plus six uh, with a group that didn't have lust. I'm not sure if they even noticed that, but our IO is low, so whoever invites us, we have to take those. And uh, this key didn't start very well. One of the palis was not dispelling the affix, and we didn't have a shaman. We didn't make it to the first boss, and they're not switching to the ads quickly enough. They barely managed to kill them before they reach the boss most of the time. And we almost make it till the end, but then the tank decides to kite the boss on top of the ads. Like, what the hell was he doing there? I have no idea. But obviously the boss ate the ads and then on the next AOE we just started dying and uh, eventually wiped. So the well familiar scenario, I had to explain how the fight works uh, and I had to make them switch to the ads uh, a little bit quicker. We eventually came back and killed the boss. But at this point it was already clear that uh, we're dealing with people that ha have not a very good idea how the dungeon actually works. Now, I don't want to talk too much about this key. It was pretty damn bad. Uh, people were not dispelling the affix and mass dispel only works for every other set. We were ninja pulling packs to the trash, wiping to that, and somehow we made it with 20 deaths to the uh, last boss. And that turns out to be unkillable for this group. People kept dying to a most various and ingenious ways, and I kept explaining what they need to do, but they just kept dying. We wiped six or seven times in total, I think. You're just seeing the very first pool here, but it was very painful. It took a lot of time and finally they just gave up because they realized that this thing is not going to die. 
So what can I say? Very good Puck Design Blizzard. Thank you very much. We wasted a lot of time and uh, we didn't even finish the key. So no vault slot and no loot. Pretty low mood, but we go to the next key. It's a plus six Dawnbreaker. We have a Shaman in the group and I'm so excited. I won't have to deal with the Affix anymore. And I noticed that he didn't even take Poison Cleansing Totem. Luckily, that was before the key started. So I told him to pick it up and then I had to explain why because obviously he didn't know how it worked. And I did consider leaving at this point but it's not that easy to get into uh, the keys with uh, our IO at this point so I decided to stick around. And it started to go relatively smoothly until the Shadow Priest died to falling through the boat. Another great design by Blizzard like uh, what the hell. He then also died on the beam on the first boss so maybe a skill issue there, maybe a bug. We, we don't know yet. He did die towards the end, so we didn't even battle rest him, the boss died. And I fly after my tank who manages to ping himself to show us where he's going to land, but he did land on the other end of the church, which is not what people usually do. And of course in a pug, uh, everybody else was confused, the priest didn't even release. So we ended up fighting a bunch of mobs on ourselves until everybody else manages to find us and catch up. So that was a very weird moment. But everything goes relatively smoothly until we pull the last mini boss before the second boss. And we were up for a surprise. The frontal orb that he spawns is now invisible until it actually materializes. So another bug blizzard, thank you very much for uh, messing up with this dungeon. They were trying to fix a bug where if the orb targets a torrent then uh, it becomes really big but then becomes small again before it just launches. And now with the new design the melee is uh, screwed up because they don't know that the orb is there and by the time it materializes uh, it's too late and they get hit and they die. So uh, thank you Blizzard for uh, actually fixing something that was not broken, but now it is broken. So I'm sorry to say this, but this is absolute dog shit of a game, guys. It will eventually get fixed for the end of the season, but who cares at this point? Anyways, we rack up a few deaths because the melee just needs to learn how to react on the orb now. It took us a while, but of course we managed to kill the mini boss with the range that we had, although the priest manages to get himself killed as well. But anyhow, we make it to the second boss. I go for lust. Uh, nobody says anything. There's no lust. Uh, so the boss takes a while as well. We manage to kill it. Then we fly up and the shaman says, eh, I'm gonna lust uh, P2 of the last boss. I did not agree, but it didn't matter. We had plenty of time, even with the deaths on the invisible orb. We still managed to easily two chest the key and we got uh, almost 250 IO for this. Putting us close to 1000, which is probably going to make it a little bit easier to get into keys, but no guarantees made there. We are also finally lucky we get uh, the crystal trinket, which uh, is not bad. It's not hero level and we actually have a hero level trinket, which is the one from the delves, uh, which gives you mastery, but then also takes away some of your secondary stats. So we're obviously going to replace it with the champion level trinket, because I think this one is uh, so much better. And we also have two dungeons for the vault right now. We need two more to get another slot. So let's go. Back to Arakara for our revenge. Yet again, we have a shaman and his main is a 2.4k IO. So uh, that should go easy, right? But at the start, the tank just keeps chain pulling and we get run down by the poison. So we get a few deaths. Then somehow he manages to run through the green circles there, which I didn't expect. And uh, he knocked me off. So I died too. They made sure to laugh at me, but then we managed to stabilize and kill the first boss relatively easy without too many hiccups. After that though, we had a pool where nobody see the little whistleblower, we got one of the big bugs spawn on top of us and then the patrol behind came with another big bug. And with all the spiders casting around, we actually ended up wiping in this pool. I did manage to keep everybody alive for long enough to kill most of the mobs, but unfortunately we couldn't kill everything. Despite that though, everything else goes pretty smoothly, including the second boss, including the trash after that before the last boss. So props to this group for playing relatively well, especially compared to the groups that we had to do this dungeon with previously. We reached the last boss without any further problems, but then the shaman just dies because he couldn't get rooted on one of the suck ins. Anks immediately, so uh, props for that. And then on the next set of poisons, I definitely did not expect him to drop the poison cleansing totem, which I should have. 
I failed to dodge the waves and died, but luckily we had a battle res. Some lessons learned, and after the sucking, I managed to get up and we finished the boss successfully, finally timing the old famous Arakara dungeon on our Disc Priest. Definitely not happy with how this dungeon went and how I played, but we're gonna take the win. Another almost 250 IO points for us, no loot, but we're just one dungeon away now from completing four total to get two slots in our vault. For the last key, we go to City of Threads plus 7, we have a Shaman, we are excited, and I decided to experiment with Divine Star. The tank went left, which is the first time I've seen this route, and I was exciting to do the little buffs which I can do on my Priest, but uh, we never get to do those uh, in this route. We do a relatively big first pool with Lust, which is fine. I am a little bit confused because I don't know what to expect from these packs here, I don't know what mobs are inside, it is the same mobs as the rest of the dungeon, of course. We have a few sketchy moments that we survive. We have one death on the pool before the first boss. Uh, somebody got stunned when I dispelled the orbs. And the first boss went relatively smoothly. The evoker was a little bit slow to move, so he would get hit by the poop in the back, but he didn't die, so we managed to kill that eventually. We don't have the long, boring running around that absolutely nobody likes, and we're just typing in chat how much we hate this dungeon. On the second boss, things also go relatively smoothly. On the first big uh, AoE, I have Mass Dispel, which is basically overpowered for this mechanic. I was quite excited to use it there, and then it's not up for the second time when this happens, so I had to brute force heal through that, but it was a relatively smooth kill. The big poison bug on top of the stairs after that, as usual, took uh, two victims this time. I don't think we used the poison totem on it because uh, the affix, so uh, it is what it is. Then we get to the third boss without any problems and uh, people started dropping quite low most of the time. I would push my cooldowns uh, in panic without timing them correctly. And I think this boss could have been a lot more easier if I was a little bit more precise when pushing my buttons and staggering some of the cooldowns a little bit, but luckily the group was using defensive, so and we ended up killing the boss without anyone dying. Although we had a lot of sketchy moments uh, throughout this fight. The same thing basically happened on the last boss as well, it's guaranteed to have a lot of sketchy moments there. At one point even the evoker managed to get himself killed by uh, getting hit by the orbs. But overall it was a pretty good group, I also played much better compared to the last couple of dungeons. The conclusion is that Divine Star sucks unfortunately, I did end up at uh, 231k DPS. But I think this number would have been much higher if I played uh, Halo. And we timed a 7, we secured uh, 2 slots in our vault. This full run is actually uploaded to the channel so you can watch it at full if you'd like to do so. And we end up at uh, 1200 IO rating, which is not as high as we would like it to be. But we are in a good position to attack next week, and if we don't get 2k, we will at least get very close to it, hopefully. Time to switch to our monk, and somehow we managed to get invited to a plus 6 necrotic quake with a warrior tank and 3 paladins on our 607 mistriever monk. We do a huge pull at the start with Lust, and I cocooned the tank and healed him a little bit, but he still dropped that. He laughed and typed in chat, that almost worked. But I quickly find out that this warrior is actually made of glass, so I had to spam heal him through the dungeon. Not to mention that one of the paladins was obviously a carry, as he didn't do much damage overall. We had few more deaths on frontals, the warrior died in the pool before the second boss, so uh, we wiped there as well. But the second boss and the gauntlet after went relatively smooth, the warrior did not manage to get himself killed again. And he was also not interested in saving me when I get double hook on the double assistant pool in the gauntlet. Obviously popping a defensive is not going to save you if you get both hooks in. Luckily they managed to melt down Stitch Flash quite quickly. So no problems there, but then the crappy paladin managed to get himself killed twice on the last boss. Yes, we're 5 melee, I get that, but come on man, you can dodge a few comet storms, right? Oh, I guess not for this guy, but we managed to kill the boss, so that is a first plus 6 timed on the monk, which is a pretty good start. I did not record the next one, which is a plus 6 mist. It was a pretty bad group with another very fragile tank that uh, kept dying. He died on the 4 mobs before the first boss. 
We also ended up at 78% trash before the last boss. So we had to do a lot of extra pulls after that. And there were some ninja pulls there, some wipes on the trash. Uh, so we finished the key, but uh, we didn't time it. And I'm not sure why, but I didn't record the next two runs as well. We ended up in a plus 7 stone vault. Pretty bad run overall, people ninja pulling, we kept wiping on trash, and obviously it was overtime at the end, but at least everybody stayed until the end, so we finished the run, and it counts for our vote. The last run was a plus 6 green bateau, which went fine up until the third boss. The tank didn't know where to tank it, so he didn't move it out of the tornadoes, and we actually had somebody eat an ad in the face at the very end, killing three people, including myself, but the boss was almost dead at this point, so it was not a wipe, and we managed to kill it successfully. I healed like a champ on the trash before the last boss. Uh, our mage had 12 stacks of the debuff and got corruption from the faceless corruptors. I managed to keep him alive. And then I overlapped some of my cooldowns on the last boss, but it melted quite quickly. So that was 250 IO for our monk. Four keys finished for the vault and pretty close to attacking 2k next week. So that was not the best week for the monk, but we got what we needed to do. We then switched to our H power, which is the worst of the outs when it comes to gear. We are at 605 or 606, but somehow we managed to get invite to a plus seven siege of Boralis. We get a squishy tank that dies on the pool before the first boss and I should have watched him a little bit closer at this point. We ended up kiting the mobs and killing them this way. And that was just one of the red marks that uh, happened in this key. We had people dying on every boss and then on frontals and almost every death was a one shot, not something that you can do to salvage. And we didn't have full wipes, but all of these deaths racked up. We were up to 10 total before we pulled the last boss and that slowed us down tremendously. We still had a chance but a lot of funny things happened. For example, I dispel myself, I knocked the lock when we were transferring to the second platform and they managed to save him with Leon Hands. The transfer to the third platform was not as smooth. Uh, we got the debuffs on the move and then uh, we got the affix and as we're moving and jumping on the third platform, we got another set of debuffs, which felt it's uh, way too quick. But then I managed to dispel myself, the slam killed me, another person died as well. We managed to send out the battle reses, uh, so after that somehow we managed to recover. I managed to top everybody up after I was uh, re resurrected. But that cost us a lot. If those deaths were not there, we would probably time the key, but we were just four seconds short. That felt completely unfair, although this key, judging by the way that we played, was probably not deserved to be timed. However, subtracting 15 seconds per each date also felt uh, a bit unfair, so uh, that is definitely something that I don't like that happened this season, and Blizzard should be looking at it, and they're taking their time, so uh, yeah. I don't want to say it, but that's another bad design, guys. Regardless, we get 250 IO for the Pali, although we didn't time, and we also get a huge belt upgrade from the chest at the end, probably replacing our worst item yet. And I had a blast playing the h Pow again in those keys, so uh, it's all wins if you ask me. We then get into the next key, which is 7 Stone Vault, and it doesn't go off well from the start. We got one of the fears go off in the first few packs, and then people kept eating the bow frontals on the way to the machinist boss. I think we had a few deaths, I managed to keep many of them alive because they would constantly eat the frontals, and then we make it to the boss and we have no range interrupt, uh, so there's plenty to heal here as the debuffs would go off. At this point, I actually noticed that the shaman is doing literally tank DPS, so uh, you cannot expect him to be interrupting, right? But then you also would expect to wipe and have few deaths in here. Somehow I managed to keep everybody alive and we managed to kill the boss. However, on the way back, we have to run the old-fashioned way because the tank didn't clear the pack next to the cart, neither on the way in nor on the way out, uh, so that was weird. Then Skarmorak took forever to die because the shaman, which was doing crappy DPS, managed to get himself killed twice. And when we eventually killed the boss and uh, started to clear the trash to the last guy, the tank managed to get himself killed by Stink in the Swirly, which was basically a huge wipe with us kiting the mobs back and forth. We ended up adding 8 deaths to our kill timer, which killed 
any hope of us timing the key. Not to mention that after we killed the last boss we had to run back and kill more trash because of the skips that the tank did. So very bad group overall, this most shaman, but uh, most of it is also on the tank. Anyways, we still get about 250 IO for the untimed key because we had no score for stone vault and no loot, but on to the next one. It is a plus six Dawnbreaker, which started to go relatively smoothly, apart from the fact that the tank decided to go to the back boat first on the Dawnbreaker. I'm not sure what was up with that, as people always go to the front boat first. Long story short, he had some very weird pool patterns after the first boss in the church, in the houses for the mini bosses. He somehow even managed to wipe us at one point by ninja pulling extra packs. I'm not even sure what happened there. He apologized after that. I also got to experience the broken orb frontals on the third mini boss, which were invisible until they uh, materialize. Thank you, uh, Blizzard. But apart from the wipe and a couple of dumb deaths, we actually managed to to chest the key quite easily. We didn't get any loot. There was a ring for rolls, but I didn't win the roll. So on to the next key to rack up our count to four keys total for the vault slots. It's a plus seven Arakara, and it was actually very very smooth up until the last boss. We had a couple of deaths that were kind of dumb, but it was a solid group with a shaman that would deal with the affix. The last boss didn't go as smoothly though, we had a couple of deaths on uh, people eating the waves and it was actually very weird to play this boss as melee as I think I was always ranged so far apart from the monk runs. But I must say healing on the pali felt quite damn nice. Much easier compared to the monk, much more smoother, much more enjoyable. I did absolutely no damage, I don't know if it's the gear, uh, probably not, it's more, uh, more of a skill issue. But I definitely had a blast playing the H Pow. And I must say, it's on par with uh, playing the Shaman and the Evoker this season. It's pretty damn nice. As for the key, we ended up two chesting, and the Pali is now almost at 1800 IU rating, which is pretty damn nice. And we should have absolutely no problem getting to 2K early next week. I am definitely looking forward to this and let's also mention that we managed to get the Sack Brute on the Pali at the end of this run so that's a huge win as I think we had a pretty bad trinket to replace. So from being probably the worst ult that we had the Pali is now definitely one of the good ones and easily climbing the, the ranks, my personal ranks being one of my favorites right now. So that's gonna be all for this episode. Uh, we're gonna play the Druid next week. I did have some low keys that were uh, irrelevant this week. Half of them were also played as tank. But at the end of the week, we have pretty good votes secured for uh, all of our oats going into the next week. So I will see you guys there for the next episode. Thank you very much for watching. Now get out of here.